Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of test and measurement. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to delve deep into some of the biggest topics in our industry. Today's guest is Dr. Diego Robolino. With over 25 years experience, he has become a familiar face in the transformer industry. Today, we are discussing one thing that can make a difference when it comes to asset management, and that is one hertz testing. So let's find out what's up with Dr. Diego Robolino. Good morning, Dr. Diego. How are you doing? Good morning, Darcy. I'm so happy to be here with you today in this podcast. Oh, I'm really excited. Oh, good. I'm excited too. Um, we always start the podcast with something we call the power up questions. And it's three questions just for us to get to know you a little bit better and to okay. switch our brains on. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Excellent. I think I am. Okay. Well, question number one is how long have you been in the electrical engineering field? In the electrical engineering field, I've been for over 25 years now. So just a short amount of time. Just a little bit more time, <laughs> yes. And what is your current job role? Well, I'm the business development director for Mega Power Transformer Testing, and I'm responsible and accountable for all the testing technologies in the transformer field that are being developed by Mega. I look after the standard procedures and the practices for our customers as well. So we relate all the commercial and the technicalities within Mega for the transformer segment. Oh, great. And what was the last conference you went to? Oh, that is an interesting question because I um, I do remember many virtual conferences that we have been <laughs> attending during the last two years. And we are preparing for an exciting conference now in Knoxville, Tennessee on electrical insulation. Uh, but the last one, I think we, we attended to the Middle East exhibition yeah. recently. And we also attended to the IEEE Transmission and Distribution Exhibition and Conference just last week. So finally getting out. And so finally we're <laughs> getting out and we're seeing each other. So you've been in the industry for an incredibly long time. You said over 25 years. Um, what of the changes have you seen in the kind of transformer arena? That, that is an interesting question because in the last 25 years, uh, there are quite a few changes going on. Even though the physics for the transformer have not changed in, in over 100 years, yeah. over a century, but the technology, the computer technology, the materials, there's so much research has been done on, on material development, on insulation materials especially. And not only on the insulation side, also on the electromagnetic side, uh, there's, there are many changes about the load. There's, it's a more demanding uh, customer nowadays and we need more load, more efficiency, right? Yeah. And we, we face these challenges every day. The, the industry is changing. We have now more on the renewable side, photovoltaic load. We have wind farms being integrated. We have the electric vehicles being integrated into our network. So that is, that is an interesting time to be. Computer sciences are making wonderful changes for us as well. So uh, there are many things that are changing at the transformer technology itself. But in your opinion, what is the most dramatic or drastic changes that you're seeing? Well, on, on the dramatic changes that we have seen is on the testing technologies probably, right? Because now with all these new demand, with these new materials, the testing technology has to evolve as well, yeah, it has right? To keep and, up with and, it. and we need to keep up with everything that is happening nowadays. So one of the things that I would say is changing is how do we look at the transformer? What are the testing practices? Uh, you know, I, I would say that there's, there's many things related to insulation that... Uh, are opening new doors and, and that is really interesting in our new world. So it sounds like, you know, Transformer is consistently looking towards the future. However, the infrastructure has been there for a really long time, you know, 50 to 60 years. So how do we look towards the future and operate in a more um, socially and economical, reliable way? One, one thing that we have to remember is that for a, for a power transformer or for a distribution transformer, there are several factors surrounding the operation of a power transformer. We can talk about adversaries of the transformer life, and we can talk about ways and best practices to keep alive that transformer, to extend the service life of a transformer. We need to look into condition assessment, right? We need to look into the things that we have, these 50, 60 years infrastructure what are we going to do with it? Uh, do we have the resources to just go and change all that infrastructure from today to tomorrow? No, we can't. Especially right now, we're facing several problems because of 
supply chain, right? We don't have enough materials. How can we bring all that we have right now into a condition reliable, safe, efficient? It's quite a challenge, really, isn't it? it? It's a big challenge. It's a challenge for the operators. It's a big challenge for the manufacturers. So we are all in this group, right, facing mm -hmm. those challenges. So on and offline testing has kind of become part of the conversation when it comes to transformer testing. Um, can you delve a bit more into how that's specifically changing in the transformer industry? Offline testing has been for quite some time in the field, yeah. right? And in the factory, mm -hmm. everywhere. From the factor acceptance testing to the commissioning, to the startup, to the maintenance routine testing, everywhere. Online testing is becoming more and more a part an essential part, yeah. I would say, of the new technology, gathering information as the transformer operates. But we have to realize that offline and online technology go together. They work hand in hand, right? Hand by hand. We cannot split them up, mm -hmm. right? So the, the best that you can do is not just, you know, cheer for uh, dissolved gas analysis or yeah. for DFR or for uh, partial discharge testing or for just online or for just offline. Yeah, it's about the whole Put picture. Them together. Exactly. Work as a team. Put them all together. Be one. The more information you have about that transformer, mm -hmm. the better you know about it and the better you can decide what to do with it. So previously you referenced um, line frequency power factor and that's been around, you know, for about 100 years. It's such a long time. Um, why has that not evolved and changed? Uh, that is actually a question that everybody has been asking yeah, nowadays, like, right? Everybody is like, so we've been doing power factor for almost a century. So uh, what is power factor first, right? So we apply a sinusoidal voltage signal and we mm -hmm. measure a sinusoidal current. And from there, we just derive what is the power factor value. And we've been doing this for quite some time at 60 hertz or at 50 hertz at line frequency. Yeah. But what's beyond line frequency? And that is the, the great window that has been opened by dielectric frequency response, yeah. right? Dielectric frequency response has opened that door and now we can see much more, right, in a much wider spectrum what the reality of the dielectric system is. Yeah. And with that being said, there are specific frequencies that are giving more and more information, you know, in just one single test. So we're very excited about the innovation that we're looking at, not just 60 hertz, but some other frequencies beyond 60 hertz. So I wanna delve deeper into something that is shrouded in a bit of mystery, which is one hertz. So can you explain to us why it is kind of such a mystery? Darcy, there's really no mystery here, right? <laughs> okay, now I, okay, for my benefit then, why is, why is it such a mystery? I think people always think that though, but, don't but they? That's actually, yeah. You're absolutely right. And that's one of the things that I really want to you know, demystify. Is absolutely. that the right word? Yes, no, we completely. can say about demystifying this because the dielectric response, right, of an insulating material is frequency and temperature dependent, right? And by saying this, that means that testing at a different frequency or at a different temperature must be somehow correlated. And just by looking at this one hertz, we realize that one hertz is even, I would say, at least 10 times more sensitive than line frequency power factor testing that could be masking some deficiency. And we, will, we may see a very good value for yeah. line frequency power factor. And because we have no way to validate it, then we just accept it. But now we have the ability to measure one hertz at a different temperature and combine those two results to be more precise, more comfortable yeah. with your testing practice. Gives you like a more accurate overview, I guess, and the more data you have, the more is, informed. Is, is, is a good word to put it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's more reliable as well, yeah, right? Sure. Not just step on one point, now you can step on two, yeah. right? And be stronger on your decision about the technicalities about the condition of that asset. So in terms of this new approach, what effect has it had on the tools that's used on the kind of high voltage equipment in the field? What kind of effect? When, we, when you think about the effect, um, technology has evolved, as we were talking before. Mm -hmm. So computer sciences together with power electronics made us capable to having the same test set up the capability to test line frequency 
and some other frequencies beyond blind frequency. So the reality right now is that in your advanced power factor testing equipment, you will have a wide spectrum of frequencies to be tested from one hertz all the way up to 505 hertz. The ability of doing that is that you can test your line frequency power factor at any temperature between, I would say, zero Celsius and 55 Celsius and properly correct that power factor okay. testing to 20 degrees C without the need of any average or misleading mm. temperature correction tables. That is a great advantage. Uh, absolutely. But what does that mean for those who are actually managing the assets? That means that you have now reliable results. That means peace of mind. That means safe and reliable operation, reduction of unplanned shutdowns, and, and, and be able to control your priorities. Well, one of the beautiful things about this one hertz is that now you may have two assets with the same power factor at line frequency. Is that really good? Is that really what, what you have? Now you have one hertz to tell you, hey, this is degrading maybe. Uh, faster than any other similar asset. You cannot compare just mm -hmm. two sister transformers and make the assumption that they are being treated the same yeah, way. Yeah, the same way. There's different loading conditions. There's different fault conditions that can happen in the system. There are different situations, environmental, operational, that will change this unique dielectric response that belongs only to the transformer that you're mm -hmm. testing. And that will be reflected with your 60 hertz and with your narrow band dielectric response, that's the way that uh, we call it, narrow band between one hertz and 505 hertz. So this seems like an incredibly deep topic. I feel like there's probably a wealth of knowledge out there. Do you have any um, resources or are there any like conferences or events that people could attend or kind of read that might help them get to know this topic a little bit better? Darcy, writing is one of the things that I love to do, <laughs> right? And, and we have many of my colleagues here are experts in the field. For sure. And we get together and, and we discuss the topic worldwide. And it's not only within you know uh, a circle of friends that we're doing that. It's the entire community being interested in something else, trying to dig solve deeper. Solve the big problem. Right, and solve the big problem. You're absolutely right. We, we want to see more than just what we have right now. We, we have the desire of knowledge, right? We are innovative. We, we, we have the technology. And like you were saying, on, on the paper side, and there's a couple of good articles that we have been working with different uh, public domain uh, transformer uh, communicators, I would say, or magazines, mm -hmm. right? So we have Transformers Technology Magazine, Transformers Magazine, uh, with uh, quite a few articles related to this narrow band and one hertz and uh, individual temperature correction as well as uh, different publications at uh, different conferences. So I would like to invite everyone to read some of the publications we have with IEEE, we have with the CIGRE. So, and also, actually, by the way, we have a dedicated channel in our website okay. looking at case studies. This is the work that we have been doing with our customers. So it's not like a collaboration with them, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Nobody knows better a transformer than its owner. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And getting the information directly from the end user, working together, supporting our customers, uh, and, and getting this is what makes this case study really interesting because it's something coming from the field. It's not just theory. Yeah. It's real life. It's, it's re yeah. real life. So if you are in the field and, and you are testing transformers, I truly invite you to be part of this community. <laughs> oh, great. We love to hear it. Diego, thank you so much for coming in. It's been an absolute oh, thanks pleasure. To you. Thanks to you. My pleasure. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching.